Hello and welcome to this series on the last days at Forerunners for Him. And the key part, the key question that we're looking at in this part of the series is when is the rapture? And today we want to look at one of the passages. You know, um, if you've seen any of my other videos, that I'm taking the passages of Scripture like pieces of puzzle out of a box, shaking them out onto the table, picking them up one by one so we can see the common sense, plain meaning of the text. And the reason for this should be obvious. It's the way we read the whole of Bible. We look for the plain meaning. That's the main meaning. It's not something hidden, esoteric, and you've got to have all kinds of chronologies and things like that and, and, and work with the numbers and move it around like a shell game and mystify everybody by the time you're through and then come up with poof, here it is. No, the plain meaning of the text is surely what Paul had in mind when he very clearly spoke in his letters about how thoroughly instructed the believers were under his care. Now, he wasn't hiding things from them. He was making it plain. How was he making it plain? In the plain meaning of the text. And so that's what we're after. And in this particular um, teaching, we're looking at that day shall not come unless, this is from Paul's second letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. That day shall not come unless unless, keyword unless, that day, what's that day? As you'll see, that day is the gathering of the saints to be with the Lord. That day is the day of the Lord's return. And that day shall not come unless. And so key thing, Paul wants us to know certain things about it so that we can settle down. <laughs> and I'll tell you right up, I, I just have such a, a stirring in my spirit when I hear People go on and on about how Jesus could just show up at any moment. He, he could come tonight. He could come tomorrow morning. Wouldn't that be wonderful if he just showed up? Well, he's not going to do that. He's already told us he's not going to do that. Paul's told us he's not going to do that. It's going to be very clear to us that we're living in the season when he's about to return. We're going to see the signs pointing towards the day. We'll, we will have the expectancy of it just about to happen. We're, we're not going to be looking around breathlessly and watch what Paul is saying in this passage here. Now we beseech you, brothers, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him. That's the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, joined together already in the thought of Paul right here, that, sh that you should not be soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit nor by word or letter as through us as if the day of Christ is at hand. What does he mean by that? As if the day of Christ is imminent. That, and this is the thing about the pre-tribulation rapture teaching. It's like, well, it could happen at any moment. Well, I suppose if, if that were true, it could. But that's not what the Bible teaches. And it's certainly not what Paul is saying here about the, the gathering of the saints to be with the Lord. It's not, it's not at hand in that sense that it could happen at any moment. Let's, let's see what Paul has to say in the, in the Bible itself. He says, for that day, he says, wait a minute, let not anyone deceive you by any means, brothers and sisters. There is a massive deception going on in this whole pre-tribulation rapture teaching, the massive deception is that the Lord, that there was some kind of secret rapture that could happen at any moment. And, and then all of the saints that are on earth at that point in time, they're going to escape the tribulation and they'll be brought back later. There'll be other saints going through the tribulation, but not this happy company that had the good fortune to be born again before we got into those final days. And, um, Oh boy, it just gets worse and worse the more you listen to it. But the thing that I'm thumping right now, if you haven't noticed, is the idea that the coming of the Lord Jesus can happen at any moment. And Paul says, don't let anyone deceive you with that kind of talk. Don't let it trouble you. Don't be bothered by it. Just let it float on by. Because that day shall not come unless there first comes a falling away. The rebellion or the apostasy is also how it's translated. That, that the Lord Jesus will not return for sure until there's a massive falling away of Christians, which as you read other texts, you see that's going to happen during the tribulation time. So it looks like 
Oh yeah, we're going to be going through the tribulation time. That's where the massive falling away of believers takes place. And Paul says Jesus is not going to come back until that happens. So don't be troubled by what anybody says and don't be deceived by them saying he's here, he's there, he, he's showing up anywhere, he could be at any moment. He says don't let that deceive you. And something else happens. The man of sin has to be re revealed. The son of perdition who exposes and exalts himself above all that is called God. My goodness, that's the Antichrist. We really are in the tribulation time and Paul is saying that the Lord Jesus is not going to come until these two incredibly huge signs take place. So we're definitely going to know. We're going to see it coming. We're going to realize, hey, it's coming. And that's why the church is going to be praying, come Lord Jesus, because we're going to be going through such a time of trial and tribulation that we really will be looking forward to his appearing because that will be our rescue from the greatest time of trial and tribulation the world has ever seen. Would the Lord Jesus allow his church to go through a time of trial and tribulation? He always has. He always has. And look at the 2,000 years of the history of the church. Look at all the martyrs there have been in every century. And Jesus himself said, in the world you will have tribulation. The very same word. Okay, but here's what we're looking at, at right now. According to Paul, that gathering together of the saints to be with the Lord at his coming will not happen unless there is a massive falling away of Christians and there is also the revealing of the Antichrist. And so those two things have to happen first. And then he says, the Lord will destroy the Antichrist with the brightness of his coming. So there you are at the very end of the tribulation period. Now you can look up 2 Thessalonians for yourself, and I hope you will, and that you will look at it with gospel eyes and like a good Berean, see what the word has to say for itself, not what some teachers with who have tickled your ears and played into those hopes and fears you've had that you'd somehow have to escape this time of trial coming upon the earth. And I don't blame you for wanting to escape, but that's not, the, that's not going to help you to go through it. We've got to face this thing and realize that the Lord Jesus Christ is not coming unless. You, there's no point in thinking that he's going to show up any minute. No point at all. Paul says, don't be deceived by that. He's not going to come unless there is this massive falling away and unless the Antichrist is revealed and then the Lord is going to come and deal with that son of perdition with the brightness of his glory when he comes. And so, my friends, I hope this is showing you what this one piece of the puzzle right here is saying. Now, we're going to look in this series at all the different pieces. You see them over in this corner. You might click on one and follow the teaching into the next lesson. And I surely hope to desire to see you standing faithful on the other side of all this that's coming.